In this video, I'm going to rank the missions of the legendary GoldenEye 007, the classic N64 game and godfather of console shooters. I'm going to rank these missions based on how hard I think they are on the remastered Xbox version. This version is considerably easier than the classic N64 version, primarily because of the vastly superior controls and significantly reduced lag and frame drops. Because of that, the list does differ a bit from what my order would be on the N64. Let's get started. Starting off the top 5 is Statue, a mission that has become notorious for its maze-like structure. Unlike the others on this list, Statue is not hard for its enemies or its intensity. Its difficulties lie in navigation and its design. Put simply, it's just hard to figure out where to go as everything looks the same. That, combined with it being one of the bigger GoldenEye missions, makes your chance of getting lost high. You know what your objectives are. The first is contact Valentin, but we have no idea where Valentin is. It turns out he is in some obscure red trailer on the outskirts deeper within the level. After you talk with him, he gives you a hint on how to complete your next objective, finding Yanis. But it doesn't really help much. Many of us playing this back in the late 90s got stuck on this mission for months. I remember getting fed up with this level and moving on to play other games. I returned after a couple month break and finally figured it out. My problem was getting to the statue and getting Trevelyan and Yanis to come out. After that point, the level becomes harder for more typical reasons, as the game gets more intense with shotgun-wielding guards endlessly chasing you down. The level then makes you backtrack all the way back to the beginning, forcing you to navigate the maze you've just completed but backward, and this time with enemies that do major damage. Once you do make it back, you have to deal with one last bit of luck, the random spawn location of the flight recorder, which serves as another source of confusion. Once you know where to go on statue, it's considerably easier. I don't struggle with it now, but it's this high on the list due to its role of gatekeeping first-time players from experiencing the rest of the game. Coming in at number 4 is Caverns, one of the longer and more objective-heavy levels of the game. From the very beginning, it's tough. Open the elevator door and BAM, you're instantly assaulted by guards with ZMGs and AR-33s. Caverns is long and many enemies are wielding the game's most damaging weapons. One thing that makes Caverns a bit easier than some of the others on this list is it does at least give you a chance to catch your breath. The level is one of the biggest in the game, with some of it being spent simply traversing to the next room. Probably the trickiest section is the room with the radio you use to contact Jack Wade. There are several guards fortified behind some crates. If you take a shot at them and miss, you might accidentally hit the explosive barrels behind them, and if they explode, the radio will blow up and you will fail. It also might kill scientists failing another objective. The ending is also difficult. Once Trev spots you in the final hallway, you're rushed by an endless number of guards. You must quickly destroy a pair of drone guns and keep moving forward. Luckily you have the RCP-90 and it's a godsend. Just hold down the trigger, empty your 80 shot magazine, sprint forward and pray. The worst thing about Caverns is dying at the end and having to redo it all over again. It's grueling. Overall, Caverns is tough but it does feel fair. It's a good challenge. Number 3 is Bunker 2. When I was first thinking of this list, I wasn't really considering including this level. But after running through the game again, I feel like I have to. This mission is ridiculous. There are literally thousands of guards that I swear just spawn from nowhere. It's amazing how many there are. Another hallmark of this level is your ammo allowance. This and Archives are the only missions in which you don't start off with a weapon, so you're forced to rely totally on enemy ammo pickups. Killing the first guard gives you just 10k of 7 bullets to work with. Now you do have 6 throwing knives as well, and if you're skilled you can put them to good use, but they're not the easiest to use, and inevitably, there will come a point where you're going to need to use the KF-7. This makes ammo preservation a crucial skill in this mission. Utilizing the KF-7 here is also tough because of the sheer number of guards. The gun is loud, and shooting it attracts what seems to be the entire Soviet army. <laughs> The most challenging room is the room with the clipboard. This room has 197 guards in it alone. But despite my exaggeration, the seemingly infinite number of guards does eventually come to an end. If you can survive to this point, the level is easy. Just finish the objectives, get Natalia, and get out. But before then, this level is the Battle of the Alamo. Before we get to the top two, which are truly in their own tier of difficulty, I want to name a few honorable mentions. One is Cradle. In another life, I certainly would have included this level on the list. There are an infinite number of guards who have extremely high accuracy, reaction time, and health. They hunt you mercilessly the whole level as you take on Trevelyan, who has even better accuracy and reaction time, nailing you with his AR-33. Luckily, the level is extremely short, and that's why it's not in my top 5. 
Another level is Jungle. If I was judging this list based on the N64 game, this level would certainly be on there. But on Xbox, it's significantly less laggy and it's way easier to see. But still, the level is tough and guards do extreme damage throughout. Other quick mentions are Depot and Train, two levels that killed me back in the day and are certainly respectable mentions for this list. I'm probably a bit biased on Train, as it's one of my favorite levels and after playing it so many times I got consistent at it. Okay, starting off the top two is Control. From the moment you leave the elevator at the beginning, the madness begins. You're immediately blasted by a drone gun and have almost no angle to take it out. I mean this has to be at least a bit of trolling from the devs. This section made 7 year old me cry in frustration back in 1998. The next couple parts are a bit easier but still certainly challenging. The level comes to its infamous climax during the so-called protect phase in which you must guard Natalia for what feels like an eternity as a seemingly endless onslaught of guards try to kill both of you. This is without a doubt one of the hardest sections in the entire game. All your skills will be tested. You'll need quick reactions to deal with the guards as they really don't hesitate to shoot Natalia and she does not have much health. You'll need good accuracy to kill them fast and you'll need endurance to see the whole thing through. It helps when you realize that the black hatted guards gun for you and guards with no hats go for her. It helps you prioritize. After that part finally concludes, you quickly have to make your way to the end as the guards just don't stop coming. If you don't know where to go, this is a guaranteed death on your first playthrough. After you do know, it's a bit easier, but you're still all but guaranteed to get shot a few times, so you'll also probably need a bit of health to spare. Control is a long, drawn out beast with a tense finale. It's close in difficulty to my number one pick, losing just ever so slightly. And here we are, Aztec, the hardest level in the game. I think we all knew this would be number one. Aztec is on another level. The guards are cracked and have their accuracy and reaction stats maxed out. They all have either AR-33s or lasers, both of which do extreme damage. Like I said in my video ranking my favorite missions, the beginning must be some sort of sick practical joke from the devs. You spawn in this razor thin cavity in the wall with no room to maneuver. I mean how did Bond even arrive here? It makes no sense. The second you poke out, you're sandwiched between three guards, one or two of which always seem to throw a nade at you. It doesn't get easier from there. In the next room, a barely visible guard way out in the distance snipes you with marksman accuracy behind cover. After trekking through the next few parts, you're finally met with undoubtedly the hardest part of GoldenEye 007, the wide open final room of death. This is it. It seems like GoldenEye's grand finale. Four drone guns, barely any room to move, guards with lasers sniping at you from across the room behind cover, and others randomly flanking you. This will put you to the test. Then there's Jaws. This guy is an absolute unit. He has a shit ton of health and dual wields assault rifles. Luckily there are a couple of exploits you can abuse. He can't shoot you point blank and he cannot shoot over gaps between staircases. If it wasn't for these, taking him out would truly be a nightmare. There's never really a break in Aztec. Even when you feel like you can finally catch your breath, you'll get flanked or surprised by a guard you thought you killed already. Aztec is truly difficult, but great in one of my favorite levels. You feel like a master of the game when you finally do overcome it. Well there you have it, GoldenEye's hardest missions. I would still rate this game as difficult for new players, even on Xbox, but it's considerably easier than on N64 if you have experience. GoldenEye is legendary and one of the biggest influences on me as a gamer today. I think that's the case for many of us who grew up in the late 90s. The game is eternally enshrined in first person shooter history. If you want more GoldenEye content from me, check out my two previous videos. One's an in-depth analysis and review of Facility, which I believe to be one of the most iconic levels of all time. And another ranks my favorite missions of the game. Both will be linked in the description. Thanks for watching.